Welcome back to Introduction to Reading Tibetan. We're learning about reading a Tibetan text by looking at the Refuge and Heart of Awakening prayer. Last time we said that it's written in a shloka form with a part A and a part B, each part having two lines each. And so now um, let's jump right in and talk about line one in the refuge part. So the first thing we'll do is I'll spell the line and then read the line out loud and then we'll parse it and analyze the line. So this is a very good way to proceed when reading a text. Spell the line, read it out loud, and then parse it or analyze it. So the first thing we see in looking at this line is the wavy thing that's called the yigo, and it just literally means letterhead, but it's placed at the head of the writing. So it'll be the first thing on a page um, of Tibetan, for instance, up there in the top left. Okay, so let's spell this line one. Sa, na, sa, song. Ra, kataga, yatagya, sa, ge. Cha, naro, cho, sa, ch. Da, na, dong. Sa, naro, tso, ga, sa, tsok. Ka, yatakya. Kigu ki, ma o cha, naro cho, ga, choke, ra, nata na, ma, sa, nam, la. Okay, that was the spelling. Now I'll read it out. Song, ge, chu, dong, soak, ki, choke, Nam la sange chudang suki chok nam la. The line in Tibetan poetry will end with two shays. The shays, the vertical stroke. So two shays indicates to us that it's poetry here. Okay. Being in poetry, that means it's almost always going to be written in an odd number of lines, odd number of syllables per line, rather. And then so if line one is nine, as this one is, we can bet the ranch that all the other lines are going to be nine syllables too. Okay. And so the meaning is going to fit into that structure. So um, our first word is the two-syllable word sangye, that means Buddha. Song can mean to purify or to wake up. And gay can mean to expand, to develop, to blossom. So those two concepts are put together in the creation of a neologism when the Tibetans translated the word Buddha from Sanskrit into their own language, part of the process of creating an entirely new language, which we now call classical literary Tibetan. You could call it Buddhist Tibetan, the Tibetan of the teachings and the text. So they took the ordinary word song and the ordinary word together, gay, and they put them together, making the new word, two-syllable word, song gay. So to cleanse or wake up from samsara, you could say, or cleanse the obscuring factors, such as the afflictions, and gay to develop what are called the yuntan, actually the positive qualities. Um, so diminishing one and developing the other, when that's consummated, you have a Buddha. Okay, the next word is chu, that's the dharma, the teachings of the Buddha, and dong is a particle. Much of Tibetan is, you could say, a dance between words and particles interwoven together. The um, particles can make up new words, or they can organize the words in the syntax of the sentence. So here, dong is a particle meaning and, so we've got Buddha, dharma, and, and then soak is a word, the next word, soak, is a word that means um, collection or gathering. And then key is a particle modifying it that connects it to, this type of particle connects a word to the following word. So the concept soak, gathering or collection, is being connected to the following word, which is choke, which means supreme or sublime. And so, soki choke, 
could be translated as supreme of communities. So we've got Buddha, Dharma, and supreme of communities. Then the nam is a particle also. It's often functioning as a pluralizing particle, like adding an S onto a word in English. But here it's just indicating, it's what we call um, a list concluding particle. So it's just indicating that's the end of the list, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Okay, and then we have law at the end. So we know from our level one course, the first day of studying Tibetan law was one of the words we learned, and it can be a particle meaning to, in, on, at, like a preposition. So altogether in line one, we've got something like in, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. So that's line one of part A, the refuge portion of our two-part prayer, Refuge and Heart of Awakening.